And as I mentioned, there were three buttons on the screen, text, video, and phone. Under the video button, which I'm not going to open right now, I'll just describe it to you, we have purple P3 software running under there. And what that does, that makes this uh, netbook uh, a video phone. What we do is we register all of these with a 10-digit phone number before we ship them so they are true video phones. This enables uh, a deaf individual to use this to call deaf or hearing people anywhere in the country. If he dials another 10-digit registered number, it will go video to video and he'll be able to sign to his friend or another deaf employee somewhere using sign language. If he dials a phone number that's not a registered 10-digit number, a VRS operator will show up on the screen automatically. That's how it's done in the United States and it's free. And they'll say, hi, I'm your operator today and I'm calling the number you just dialed. It's ringing, ringing. Ah, here's someone answering. Hi, I have Ken on the line and they'll be signing to him. You can sign back to him. And this enables the deaf employee to um, call for parts, call for lunch, call a colleague, uh, anybody in the country and communicate with them. So now the deaf individual can communicate with anybody at their desk using InterpreType. He can put this in a little bag. So the deaf individual can actually have this bag with him. It holds both computers in one bag, nice cute little bag, and all the cords. He can actually go up to the conference room, set these two up, have a meeting with his boss, make his way through the workplace. He can sit down to his desk, make phone calls, call deaf people, call hearing people. The only thing we haven't done is gotten a live interpreter in the room with the person, and we're gonna do that next. And the way we do that is under the phone icon. I've already connected with Roy, and this allows us to do video conferencing, basically, with the audio feed. Unfortunately, the Purple P3 software doesn't have an audio feed, or at least so far under video, we don't have audio. But uh, with the software running under the phone icon, we have audio as well. I've already connected to Roy, and here's what it looks like. So if I wanted to have a VRI conversation, video remote interpreting, what I would do is I would connect to a remote interpreter, and I'm going to have Roy pretend he's the interpreter for now. And what the interpreter would do would be wearing a headset. Someone would call in, and if I were the deaf person calling in, this is what I would see. I would call in, I would see an interpreter like this. But um, if I wanted to talk to someone in the room, yeah, if Roy, if you want to... Okay, and uh, excuse me, I'm going to walk aside. And Roy's walk actually going to pick up the whole unit and go someplace else the camera. and interpret for us. In fact, we can even see him walking away. Now, if I had a deaf individual sitting across from me, I would actually turn my, my camera around and the hearing person would put on another headset. These noise-canceling headsets, by the way, come with InterpreType. The hearing person would wear this and would talk to Roy. And as they talked to Roy, Roy would be signing, and I, the deaf person, could see everything Roy's signing. And I could say, hi, Roy. Nice to see you. Sure, if you want to, if you want to pretend you're the deaf person, you can. I don't know if you know sign language, you probably don't. But anyways, Roy is going to be signing to you, and I, as the hearing person, can actually put this on. <clears throat> and now Roy can hear me, and you can sign back to him, and he would tell me everything you said, and we can just have a conversation this way. So that's kind of how VRI works. Um, if you wanted to have a larger meeting, or if you had a student in the classroom who showed up who didn't have the interpreter who couldn't show, the student could easily open up just one interpretite, connect to a remote interpreter and actually take out a wireless microphone, doesn't have to be this headset, and just hang it on the teacher. And the teacher can go to the front of the class and walk around and talk and the audio sound will go all the way through the computer and out to the interpreter, Roy. He could be in Seattle, he could be another department of the school being an interpreter on campus, it doesn't really matter. He'll interpret the whole thing. The student will just sit at their desk, watch the interpreter, could sign back. I have a wireless mic in my bag that has a little earpiece that the teacher could put in her ear. And if you had a question, you could sign to Roy. Uh, Roy would ask the teacher the question, and it would come back, uh, and you'd get your answer. So that's how we do video remote interpreting through InterpreType. So now we've covered all the bases. Text communication, calling on the phone through Purple uh, uh, VRS, uh, and being able to call uh, other deaf people using it as a video phone, and using our software to uh, do VRI conversations. One of our largest uh, customer bases is colleges and universities and several universities that have many deaf students on campus have first they've used it in a couple ways to deploy it. Three different ways I can think of. The first is they use it uh, 
in student services areas such as financial aid, um, campus safety, housing, the bursars, and what they'll do, since we're a software company, we will sell them perhaps one piece of software for the receptionist at financial aid to load on her computer. She doesn't need to buy another computer, she already has one. And then they'll buy one interpret type to put up on her counter so that um, whatever deaf student walks up to the counter can type back and forth with the receptionist and get the information uh, back and forth. That's kind of locked down uh, a more permanent use and doesn't really need to be moved. Libraries will do the same thing. They'll set it up at the reference desk. They'll set it up at a checkout desk. They may have two systems running. Uh, and the students can check out books and ask questions. And if they ever want to have a conference with a pair of interpret types, they can actually take those off the counter, go to a private conference room, hook them up together, have a conversation, and then when they're done, put them back uh, where they belong. So a lot of student services groups in colleges. Um, the second way they're used in colleges is colleges can set up their own call centers for their own in-house interpreters so that a student can actually go around campus and the interpreter doesn't have to go there. If they have Wi-Fi around campus, the student can connect to the interpreter, put the microphone on the teacher, talk to an in-house campus interpreter. There's no extra fees. They're already paying for the interpreter to be there and the student can get the class interpreted without the interpreter actually having to, to be there. Um, and the third way, it would be as an accommodation for the student themselves. Some uh, colleges and universities, each individual school may buy three or four interpret types that students can borrow. A big problem with students is they can't go in for office hours and visit the teacher after the interpreter's gone for class and there's office hours in the afternoon. So the uh, uh, student is stuck and can't ask a question to the teacher. Here he could borrow a pair of interpret type, go in, talk to the teacher, get their answers answered, save the conversation, print it, go back, return interpret type, uh, and they can use it that way. And lastly, we, we highly recommend um, the true measure of a college or university is how well their students get employed when they graduate. Well, why not give this bag to a student who's got an internship over the summer and he walks into the whatever firm he may be working at, say an accounting firm, and say, yeah, I'm deaf, but I have the tools I need. I can communicate with anybody in this building. I can make phone calls. I can get a remote interpreter. Show me to my desk and let me do my job. And that's a beautiful accommodation uh, and a way for it to be used. So colleges and universities uh, are our primary target. Um, a lot of federal government and some commercial places can use it the exact same way the, the student services group uses it. Um, JetBlue, for instance, airlines can use it down in their baggage claim. A lot of them like the Spanish translation down in baggage claim because there's a lot of irate customers that they may not be able, may not be able to communicate with. It seems to work well for them down there. Um, and a lot of uh, uh, court systems may use this in the court periphery. Um, people coming in for juries, jury duty or want to file for family court, all sorts of, uh, um, of ways wherever you're receiving the public. We even have a, a, a hospital cart that uh, holds a pair of these. In fact, the TSA bought those and they can wheel them down to a lane where uh, a passenger may have, they have trouble communicating with a passenger and they can actually type back and forth to the passenger quickly uh, without having to find an interpreter and get some text communication done that way. So both commercial, federal government, colleges and universities, um, that's the core of uh, uh, where InterpretType is used. So I thank you for letting us do this demo. I hope you understand what InterpretType can do and all its capabilities. And as things change, we'll be continue to add more features. But uh, we are very glad that uh, we have the capabilities of these Wi-Fi's and these cameras uh, and being able to expand what InterpretType does beyond just text messaging. Thank you.